What are three things everyone knows about water? Everyone knows that you can drink it, its chemical composition, and that a lot of stuff floats in it. But what if one of these facts suddenly changed? What if you couldn't float in water anymore, couldn't swim in it, no matter how hard you try? Well, this is the liquid nightmare that I want to explore today. What is non-buoyant water? And why is it in these tanks? Now entering the facility. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a fan of scary warning signs. We've done episodes about them here at the facility before, and heck, I even sell some as merchandise, which is why when I saw these signs, warning of non-buoyant or negative buoyancy water, you know I had to investigate. Non-buoyant water just sounds so sinister and weird, like hard air or burning ice or unmaintained hair. Could you imagine? <laughs> I know, right? It's so weird sounding that even Hideo Kojima himself used non-buoyant water as a death plane in a boss fight in Metal Gear Solid 2, and that actually stuck with me through all of these years. Now, make no mistake, these signs are very real, as are, unfortunately, the fatalities reported in and around the tanks that these signs are posted on. But here's where it gets really interesting. It's actually controversial whether or not these warning signs are warning about the right thing, the actual harm. So let's dig into it. First, if we want to know what non-buoyant water is, we must fully understand what buoyancy is. So grab your best pair of swimming pants and follow me. What, you don't have a pair of swimming pants? <laughs> Peasant. <laughs> When we say that something is buoyant or not, we're actually saying many things everywhere all at once. We are describing a relationship between the object to be floated and the fluid doing the floating or not. Put simply, an object will be buoyant, it will float, if the weight of fluid it displaces with its volume weighs more than it does. So, for example, a rock is quite small in its volume, but it is very heavy, and so the displaced water is likely to be less heavy than this rock, and so the buoyant force isn't enough to make it float. On the other hand, if you have something like a water bottle, it's mostly air throughout its volume, and so any fluid it displaces probably weighs more than the entire water bottle itself, and so, and so it floats. Put more mathematically, an object will float if the ratio of the densities is less than one. Want to see me derive that? Sure! Density is also why I'm in this hot tub. The density of this very bubbly water can't be the same as normal water, can it? It might be a very slight difference, but all these bubbles are taking up some volume within the water and they weigh almost nothing. Let's see if we can prove that. So what I'm gonna do is fill this bottle with mostly water and then see how far the water line comes up to as a judge of its buoyancy. I'm gonna mark that right about there. Now what we're gonna do is bring it over to the hot tub. I'm now gonna put the same water bottle into this more bubbly water to see if there really is a difference in buoyancy created by these Michael Bublets. <laughs> the difference here is quite slight, but I think you can tell that on average, the water bottle falls just a little bit lower in the water. Bye-bye. In the theory then, a fluid like water could get bubbly enough such that nothing, no one could ever float in it. Nothing could ever swim in it. And this brings us back to our scary warning signs. The signs in question today are all found posted against so-called aeration tanks, found in nearly every wastewater treatment plant in the world. Inside these tanks is bubbling human sewage. Why do we need tanks like this? Well, without these tanks, we wouldn't be able to use bugs to eat our poop. Ew. Well, someone's, someone's got to do it. 
Wastewater treatment is a critical piece of modern society's infrastructure, allowing for water reclamation and recycling and preventing waste from polluting the cities, societies, and environment. The separation and treatment of our waste is literally one of the most important advancements in human history, and today our techniques are surprisingly sophisticated. But the basic treatment method that most plants use is biological treatment via these aeration tanks. Inside these tanks there is circulating human sewage, yes, but intentionally mixed in with it are microorganisms, or what civil engineers like to call bugs, that naturally eat our carbon-containing material. Like your poop. Yes, Aria. But more importantly, when these bugs get to feeding, they tend to clump together or flocculate. This allows engineers to create a multi-stage treatment process where sewage is first cleaned by the bugs, those bugs settle out of the mixture in another tank naturally, and then clean water is reclaimed. Biological wastewater treatment is a simple, effective, and very clever way to treat our waste and take advantage of what nature already does best. But like you or I, these bugs need some input. They need oxygen to live. And so this is why these aeration tanks that we've been talking about look like the worst hot tubs you could possibly imagine. The bugs need many cubic meters of air circulated around them for proper respiration, oxidation of materials. And so they can eat your poop. Yes, Aria, sorry, she just loves wastewater humor. And it's all this air circulating in these tanks that makes civil engineers believe this water is non-buoyant and therefore extremely dangerous. However, Unlike another engineering hazard known as a drowning machine, where the mechanism of harm is very clear, it's actually controversial whether or not aerated water in the context of these tanks is dangerous in the first place. Is there a difference between the theoretical and the practical? Hmm. Though people have unfortunately died inside of an aeration tank, there doesn't seem to be an actual consensus as to the cause. Could it have been super bubbly water that you'll immediately sink to the bottom of? Or could it have been just accidental drownings, which can happen in any body of water? Yes, you can find dire warnings about sinking like a stone in DNR documents and on the blogs of wastewater treatment plants, but is this a difference between theoretical and practical? Yes, bubbly water is less buoyant, but is it less buoyant as to be dangerous inside of an aeration tank specifically? You see, inside of an aeration tank, unlike a hot tub, the bubbles come straight up from the bottom. This creates a flow and a force which can act to counteract any loss of buoyancy. In fact, a study looking into how an object's buoyancy would change inside of a real aeration tank found that the total loss of buoyancy was less than 2%. But engineers wanting to know what it's actually like for a human to fall into one of these tanks did not stop there. In 1985, witnesses watched as one Midwestern engineer tossed himself into an active aeration tank. Don't worry, he tied a rope around himself and his wife held it. The result of this test was that he was totally fine. He experienced nothing like what we see on the warning signs. More recently, just last year, sewage treatment plant specialist Philip, can't pronounce your last name, decided to freaking swan dive into an aeration tank filled with drinking water when it was being cleaned. He's an amateur diver, and as you can see, a bit of a show off. Finally, a Facebook post reads, one of the big unanswered questions in engineering is answered. No, you don't sink, although you are not quite as buoyant, Philip explained. These two in-situ tests also confirm what maker daddy Adam Savage found in a 2011 episode of Mythbusters, that bubble-generated flows seem to be enough to either partially or fully counteract any loss of buoyancy due to density change, were you to fall into an aeration tank. When I texted Adam about wow, this... Wow, name drop much? Calm down. When I texted Adam about this, about the guy who dove headfirst into a working aeration tank, he definitely gave his nerdy blessing as to the results. Look, despite what these signs say on their faces, as Professor Richard Feynman once famously quipped, If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's right. 
Though in theory, non-buoyant water sounds dangerous, in practice, inside of wastewater treatment plants, it doesn't seem to be. So does that mean that these scary signs that we started off with are wrong? Well, no, I think it's more complicated than that. Though non-buoyant water or less buoyant water inside these tanks doesn't seem to be dangerous, falling into a giant vat of water in full clothing when you're not expecting to, getting pulled to the edge of one of these tanks where the downward circulating flow force from the bubbles can counteract the buoyancy from a typical life jacket, Studies found that, yeah, that could absolutely be dangerous, and that's probably why those unfortunate souls drowned. These signs are probably scarier than they need to be, but that's totally fine when your ultimate concern is someone's safety. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a sold out white lab coat, if you want to see episodes early, get bloopers, videos, have private monthly members only live streams with me, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And if you support us just enough, ho ho, you get your name on Aria each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds, over a thousand. I have no idea how to pass the time. Thank you to Adam Savage for once again answering my weird text messages in the middle of the night. And fun fact, my degree is actually in civil and environmental engineering. So this video was pretty close to what I've studied throughout my life. So it was quite interesting. And what gets even more interesting than this aerobic biological wastewater treatment, there's also anaerobic biological wastewater treatment, which uses bugs that don't need oxygen. And when they do that, they produce a lot of methane when they're eating, you know, your, your excrement. And they produce a lot of uh, natural gas and methane that you can then refine on site into clean natural gas, which many wastewater treatment plants do. And one time I was working in a lab as a scientist and I was working on a container that was pressurized full of these things and I didn't open it right and uh, all the bugs and some of the wastewater poop splashed all over my face and hands. Okay, that's why you wear a lab coat. Thanks for watching. I can still, I can still remember what it smelled like.